now it's time for Dr. Ichikawa. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Masao Ichikawa. Actually, he is my colleague. Uh, Dr. Ichikawa graduated from uh, Nippon Medical School in 1990, and uh, in uh, uh, 2003, uh, he studied abroad as a research fellow in the Department of uh, Oncology, Immunology, and Johns Hopkins University. And now, he is a senior assistant professor of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology in Nippon Medical School. And now, his specialty is uh, laparoscopic surgery, especially in uh, pelvic organ prolapse reconstitution and endometriosis. And he's reported many new methods in this field. Okay, so please start your lecture, Dr. Ishikawa. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Professor uh, Akira, for your kind introduction. So let me share my slide. So, uh, among my friends, I'm very famous for being acting like a chameleon. What does this mean? Uh, it's not my appearance. Uh, it's because what I say at the conference is always different. In other words, I change my opinion so many times. Uh, don't worry, I'm not a liar. So can you guess what this picture shows? Uh, these are meshes we use for pelvic organ prolapse. The mesh on the light is a mesh I used to use uh, in LSC when I started LSC uh, 30 years ago. The left one, is the mesh I using right now for LSC. As you can see, it's very small. Uh, this is the shame of the double mesh LSC. Uh, as you can see, there are two separate meshes along the vagina, uh, anteriorly and posteriorly. On the other hand, uh, this is a single mesh LSC has only uh, mesh and uh, only a anterior mesh. At first glance, the double, uh, the double mesh LSC looks more reliable. But why did I stop doing double mesh LSC? That's because I experienced some complications and found that the posterior mesh could be risky. In Japan, there is a dispute over whether double mesh LSC or single mesh LSC is better. Perhaps this dispute it could be, uh, could have been initiated by me. In 2008, I conducted the first double mesh LAC in Japan, and I presented its effectiveness at many conferences, and everyone started to, started to perform LAC. But I experienced some complications in 2014, and I started advocating single mesh LAC. Again, I studied to report the effectiveness of single mesh LLC at conferences. Uh, this could be the main reason for this dispute. This is a result of the survey of 150 facilities conducted by JSGOE this year. The question is, what kind of LLC do you mainly perform? As you can see, the two main forces are in balance. Uh, but the single measure LAC looks a little dominant, though. But I'm sure you are worried. Is it okay not to reinforce the posterior vaginal wall? My answer is, of course, no. I will reinforce it, but I don't use mess. I use barbed suture instead. This is a method of laparoscopic repair of posterior vaginal wall using a barbed suture. That method is already implemented in 32% of facilities on the same survey in Japan. I'm very pleased with this result. We have further developed this technique and created minimally invasive LC very recently. So what I'm going to tell you today is a final form of LSC based on my 30 years experience in this surgery. Uh, 
the three character uh, we uh, minimally in this LAC has three characteristics. Uh, first, we use only a small anterior mesh, as I mentioned earlier. Second, we adapt native tissue repair with barbed suture or vaginal perineal corporaphy repair uh, to repair rectocele. Third, we do minimum dissection along with the fascial structure in the pelvis. I will introduce this later. Here is the procedure for minimally invasive LSC. First, uh, start with uh, perineal corporaphy if necessary. Second, dissect the front of the sacral promontory and do suturing. Then, uh, do subtotal hysterectomy. Uh, sorry. Do uh, subtotal hysterectomy. Fourth, uh, dissect uh, vertical uterine pouch and place anterior mesh. Uh, five, dissect the Douglas pouch and uh, repair the posterior vaginal wall with a bubble suture. Six, create, create a parauteral sacral ligament tunnel. Seven, fix the mesh to the sacral promontory and uh, bury it in the peritonia. I can't explain all of these steps right now, so I pick up two topics. First topic is dissection and uh, suturing in front of the sacral promontory. The most important thing in identifying the sacral promontory is to be aware of the three membrane structure. The three membrane structure are the peritoneum, pre hypocastic nerve fascia, parietal pelvic fascia. If you can find these structures and dissect them one by one, you can safely identify the anterior longitudinal ligament on the promontory. However, in reality, these structures are not always clear. This case has a, a large amount of the fat tissue in front of the promontory. Now I have a question for you. Where does this fat come from? From peritoneum, perihypogastric nerve fascia, uh, parietal pelvic fascia. I think the fat tissue could belong to the mesentery of the rectum the yellow one. And this fat is wrapped in a shiny fascia propria of the rectum. So, if you pull it to the left, it will disappear from this place. Then, I will explain this mechanism using uh, the cross-sectional view of this part. This is a situation where there is a lot of fat tissue in front of the promontory in the resting state. The huge mass of fat in the mesentery, lapped in the fascia propria of the rectum, protrudes uh, in front of the promontory. Its existing layer could be between the peritoneum and the polyhypocastic nerve fascia, so called layer A. Therefore, if you rise at peritoneum, which contains a superior rectal artery, to the left, the fat mass, the fat mass tissue will move. It's like this. When the mesentric uh, fat tissue is removed and the tension is applied to this area, the original, the original three membrane structure appears. Sometimes you can see a clear area under the peritoneum called layer A or layer B. They are, they are the entry points. Layer B is between the prehypogastric uh, pre nerve fascia and the uh, parietal pelvic fascia. The layer is a little, this layer is a little thick, uh, and some hot tissue accumulates here as well. If you go into layer B, you often go into the, uh, into this fat. This is the actual image. Layer A and layer B are depicted here. Finally, piercing the parietal pelvic fascia leads to the target, the anterior longitudinal ligament at the sacral promontory. Okay, I will show you the uh, video. Now, there is a lot of hard tissue in front of the uh, promontory, right? Uh, I'm holding the area which contains the superior vector artery.
this is the, could be the artery. Then when we lift the, the fat tissue. Now I try, I'm trying to cut the peritoneum. So can you see the clear area can be seen. Now I'm cutting the fat tissue, but at this point, I'm not sure which area is a layer A, layer B. Here could be some layer. Now on the left side, we can see the uh, fascia propria of the uh, uh, propria of the rectum. Now layer layer A and layer B, we can see that. Then I go into the layer B to enter further to deeper. On the left side, we can see the hypogastric nerve. Maybe we are still layer B. And here, we, I found the parietal pelvic fascia right now. Parietal is hard to lift. Then I cut. Tissue. Uh, in this case, the parietal pelvic seems to be thicker rather than normal. I think finally uh, we on the inner ligament. So we we don't have a uh, uh, have enough time to explain this one. Okay, here let me explain the uh, parauterosacral ligament tunnel. With this method, the mesh can be buried in the peritoneum without difficulty and the gaps. The blue dotted line indicates that this is a, a natural route using uh, IP ligament. So it's actually a minimal dissection uh, method. On the other hand, the yellow dotted line indicates the route uh, where the mesh pass in the conventional method, such as double mesh LSC. The yellow route makes it difficult to cover the mesh with peritoneum because it passes the deepest part of the pelvic floor, the Douglas pouch. As a result, uh, a mesh, mesh breach is likely to be formed. You might think this is not a big deal. But, this, but that's a big mistake. This is a case of RSC performed at the one facility. Please take a closer look. It's an excellent technique. But do you notice something? Yes, a bridge of mesh could be created. So what happened the next? Okay, here is a uh, turn uh, under the bridge, a mesh bridge. So after that, the patient had a severe ears, then had a need a surgery. You may think that ears experience is rare, but it, in reality, 11% of the institution have post ears surgery ears experience. So this is by no means a rare complication. Yes, the paraudiosacral ligament tunnel is the best way to prevent such errors. Here, I will explain how to create the paraudiosacral ligament tunnel. Dissect uh, the shallowest layer in the posterior leaf of the broad ligament. Then, push 
the ureter and the hypogastric nerve laterally. And then dig the shallowest layer from the incision site in front of the uh, sacral promontory. And connect it to the previous part. Right now we can make a tunnel. Okay. So finally, the anterior uh, anterior wall mesh is passed through the pre uh, para sacral ligament tunnel. And secure to the sacral promontory. As you can see, the mesh is comfortably and tightly covered by the peritoneum. Yes, Douglas pouch is very clear. Okay, here's my uh, take home message. To reduce mesh related complications, single mesh LC plus alpha will be another option for your uh, treatment. And one more words, when the environment changes, we have to change too. That's my last message. Thank you very much for your kind attention. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you for a good uh, presentation. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, it's time for uh, open the question. And actually, we have uh, two questions from the audience. Uh, Okay, one first question is, uh, do you have uh, some cases of a uh, literal injuries? How about, do you have uh, any experience about this? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have. I think this question is a farmer question for the other speaker, I think. So, but the answer is no, uh, I don't. But when I did the transvaginal surgery, uh, I did uh, maybe uh, a, a lot of the surgery, so I experienced it twice. The TBM surgery is a little bit diff uh, uh, dangerous rather than the LSC. Okay, I agree with you. Okay, the second question okay. is from, from Dr. Chiron Lee. And uh, oh, do you have any converted, co uh, any experience to convert uh, do you have any idea to convert a robotic surgery to an open surgery? Uh, no. No. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I, mm, yeah, I, I didn't convert from the laparoscopic surgery to the open uh, sacrocolopathy. The answer is no. And how do you think about uh, RSC? RSC? Compared, yeah, in compared yeah. to uh, LSC. Yeah, RSC is very good uh, way to do sacrocolpapexy, but still, uh, still, RSC might have some advantage for sensoring or something. So, to adjust the tension of the mesh is 
need some uh, uh, some secu secure or very concise procedure. That's that's in that way. I trust my finger uh, rather than uh, robotics mm -hmm. right now. But the situation will be changed soon. Yeah, I think the feeling is the biggest advantage in the. Uh, Yes, I, I agree. I think, so I think so. <laughs> yeah, but actually, you performed the RSC yesterday, huh? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. <laughs> oh, okay. The next question is: uh, uh, cervix is very near promontory. Is it too tight? How? Uh, yeah, I, uh, so that's a nice question. So, uh, yeah, I, I just uh, length of the vagina to the seven centimeter usually. Then, uh, in seven centimeter is, uh, maybe a average. So I don't think, uh, mesh is too tight. And I also, I have not experienced some, uh, complaint from the patient about pain or something like that. And I also, I use only anterior mesh only. So if we use the double mesh, I think, uh, posterior mesh might cause some pain. Uh, if you pull the mesh so tight, but the only anterior mesh is very flexible. So if you pull uh, a little bit harder, I don't think it uh, produce any problem. Okay, that's my answer. Okay. I got few more questions. Okay. Is the exit, exit of the tunnel lateral to okay. the sacral uterine ligament? If a posterior mesh is pressed, does it cut the sacral uterine ligament? This is the question. Okay, wait, wait a second. So. Uh, yeah, uh, so wait, wait a second. So, lateral, lateral to the ligament. Yeah, so actually, uh, Uterus, uh, uterus ligament is a pretty complicated, uh, 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 structure. So I think, uh, Dr. Takemura said before, so maybe it's a combined the peritoneum and the fascia. So I will separate, uh, separate uterus ligament to, to the peritoneum and the fascia. Then I, the mesh goes, goes through the between those space. Sorry, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to explain. Is, is that okay? Okay. Okay. Three more questions. Uh, I'm afraid that with the procedure, very deep cardiac will remain. I'm afraid it may cause the enter okay. Do you think? Okay. Yeah, uh, well. that's very reasonable question. So I usually, uh, do the, uh, Perineal choropography by, uh, by the vaginal root, uh, simultaneously. And, uh, the perineal choropography can cover maybe four centimeter from the vagina. And uh, also, I do the, I do the, uh, choropography under the uh, laparoscopy with, uh, bulb suture. I think those, if I combine two strategy, for the posterior, uh, posterior vaginal wall. I think it, it can cover all of them. That's why I don't, I'm not worried about that. Okay. And one more question. I believe hyper, okay. hyperperitoneal closure is important to prevent recurrence of the posterior part. How do you think about that? Uh, yeah, uh, that, that's understandable. Uh, but my experience, uh, from my experiences, so if you uh, put the cervix to the very high position, I think it can cover most of the problem. Uh, I think level one is very important. So yeah, in my I I don't have any uh, severe recurrence uh, in terms of the uh, uh, cystocele. I don't know cystocele. Yes. Uh, I, I I forgot so. Sorry. I don't have any severe recurrence in, in that field. Okay. The last question from the audience is uh, okay. 
What about the sexual function after surgery? Uh, sorry, I haven't checked the detail yet, so I, I want to try mm. that later. Uh, so, sorry for that. Okay, thank you uh, very much uh, for many questions from the audience. Thank actually, you very much. Actually, this procedure is still uh, under controversial. Yes. Do you have uh, any result about the uh, long-term result of uh, uh, yeah. enhanced uh, recurrence rate? Yeah, I, I have been doing this surgery since uh, 2040, so mm -hmm. uh, maybe so more than 100 has already past five years. So far, it seems to be okay. So we don't do the recurrent surgery for after this procedure. But still, very few patients have a uh, slight uh, recurrence of the uh, Lex cell and the cyst cell. But uh, it's the same of the patient with double measure ST. So I think there is no big deal, uh, no, no big difference between double mesh and the uh, single mesh surgery, I think. Okay, anyway, I would like, I would like you to report this result okay. uh, regarding the long term prognosis. Okay. okay, okay. Thank okay. you very much. So, Thank you, good presentation. So it's Thank time you. to move to next presentation. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.